In this episode, we're going out back, from the Queensland corner country to the Isa. But first, Jack wants to talk about his favourite furry animal. Is there a lot of bilbies in Charlieville? In Charleville here, we have nine, and this is the captive breeding program. So we're breeding them up to put them back out in the, to the fence at Currawinya, mm -hmm. and also out into the wild at Estrebler Downs, which is the last wild population in Queensland. Are they nearly extinct? They are. They're threatened, and that's why we're trying to breed them up here and get their numbers back up again. What do bilbies look like? Bilbies are these lovely, soft, little, bluey-grey critters have a big long nose and big ears like a rabbit. So where do they live? They live down in burrows and they can dig down to about two metres. And what they're looking for is a nice temperature of about 22, 23 degrees. Hmm. And they'll stay down in there during the day. And because they're nocturnal, well, what I'm will they do? That, night. That's right, they come out at night. This might be the closest I come to holding a star. Well, actually, it's nothing to do with the star. It's an iron meteorite, and meteorites come from rocks from space. Cosmos quality, you might say, but maybe not star quality. And you said it's iron? Because I can feel the weight uh, That of it. one is an iron meteorite, uh, which is broken away from an asteroid. Oh, how exciting. Can people come to the centre and actually hold a meteorite? We get them out of the cabinet and we pass them around. We tell them how they originate in space, their journey through, and so forth. Are there lots of hands-on things to do at the Cosmos Centre? Uh, there is. We have machines, uh, interactive machines, all about space. Some of them are just a bit of fun, but they're all very informative. <laughs> Hi, Bruce. Mel, we're at the Cosmos Observatory. I've heard this is a wonderful place to see the stars. Yes, Colette, it really is the best place in the world. We have lovely black outback skies. So if people come along, they can get to use these telescopes and even bring their children along and it's a hands-on experience. Certainly, we operate every night. See, oh, isn't it great? Oh. And uh, we have families, particularly through the school holidays, they all come out and view our skies with us. We love sharing our skies. Penny, is that high enough for you? It could be higher. I'll bring it up a little bit for you. How's that? That's perfect. We're at Charlieville, the site of a top secret American air base, and Rachel's going to tell us why. Rachel. Hi, Colette. It was actually during the Second World War. Um, the American soldiers arrived in this area and actually commandeered the airport. The reason it was so top secret is actually this building right behind us. And this particular building housed what they call the Norden Bomb Vault site which was one of their very first computerised bombing systems. And that's what it was all about, that's why the site was here? That's right, yeah. It was basically guarded to the point where there were guards on all four sides. Um, it had barbed wire around it. And it's beautiful and quiet here, quite peaceful, but it wouldn't have been like that during World War II? No, certainly not. Um, at the height of the war, they had 3,500 American soldiers stationed here, which is actually Charleville's population today. And I believe the Flying Doctor Service can trace some of its history to here? Through our research, we've found out that the Americans were told to leave the Australian soil as they found it. Um, however, they've donated one of their hangars to the Royal Flying Doctor Centre, which is still used today as their servicing hangar. The social aspect really interests me, because you can go and see where the men used to have their baths. That's right, yep. The bitumen baths, that's probably personally my favourite site. Um, where they actually dug the trenches and, and lined them with bitumen and um, gave the men a bath to basically treat them for the little nasties you may pick up mm. in the bush, ticks, fleas, that sort of thing. So it was quite a community. If something went wrong, somebody could be looked after here? On top of um, building their own little hospital, which is still there today and part of the tour, they actually commandeered the Charleville Hospital as well. Um, I'm sure there's a lot that we've yet to, to unearth. Um, one of those rumours being um, there's actually an entire plane buried here somewhere. We've actually got no idea where to look at the moment, um, but we're hoping to get some, some professionals out to do some archaeological digs and, and see what they can find for us. Outback Queensland. Experience the people, the places, the wide open spaces. For more information, visit adventureoutback.com.au. Janet, this is a wonderful view. Yes, it is. The tourists absolutely love it. 
um, they usually come out very early in the morning or very late in the afternoon because the sunsets are absolutely spectacular here. They're quite breathtaking from both this view and the nearby tabletop. They're both part of the Grey Range, so they've been here forever. And it's a, it's a big reward, but it's only a short drive from town and it's not a huge climb, is it? It's not a hard climb. No, it's a relatively easy 10, ten minute scramble and I'm not very fit. How did Coolpea come into being? The railway line was proposed to go to Ada Vale. Um, it got to Cheapy and they decided to divert to Quilpie and um, we started off like that as a railway settlement and we just grew and became the bigger town. Um, it's a centre of a uh, big sheep and cattle industry and opal and oil so yeah. tourism helps a lot now. So you can spend quite a bit of time exploring here and yeah, you'll see little wrens and all sorts of birds out here in the lovely afternoons. Mark, you design this jewellery, but you're also a miner. That's correct, yes. Yeah, and that's how the story of Opal starts, out, out in the rocks? Out in the rocks, yes. We're, we're mining in sandstone, and these boulders, sandstone and ironstone rocks, sit in the sandstone, and, and then we break them open with our miner's pick. And if we see any nice opal like that, we then bring it back and block it out with a diamond saw, and then we'll, we'll, set, we'll sand and polish it. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. End result is yeah, the jewellery. End result is, is the opal, and then we set it in, in gold and silver, yeah. And Quilpie is quite special because of its opals. How, how did they come to be here? Uh, what happens is um, water comes down through the sandstone we're mining in, picks up the silica out of the sandstone and fills up the cavities in the ground. Now our cavities in Queensland are in these boulders. When the water dissipates it leaves that deposit of silica and that's your opal. It depends on how the molecules are lined up. If the molecules are very well lined up you get good light refraction and that's how you get your good colour. If they want a bit of a more hands-on experience, can they go looking for opals? Yeah, if they want to do, go and do a bit of a dig, the council has a fossicking area two kilometres out of town and there's four separate areas there. You can go along with your pick and scratch through the ground and pull it out, rake it open. I had some kids find some stuff yesterday actually. Oh brilliant, yeah. so you can find some you your can own find, opals? Yeah, you can find your own, find something nice, you can bring it back here and I'll cut it for you. Oh wonderful. You're so lucky in Thargo with all the lovely old buildings you've got and it's a bit of a giveaway where we are yes, with the bed. It is. We're in the old Thargo Mental Hospital. This hospital was built around about 1888 out of unfired mud brick and they used it right up until 1976 as their hospital facility. We now use it as a visitor information centre and we have a little bit of memorabilia in here to just go back to the days of the hospital. So what while you're working, Jan, if you're feeling a bit poorly or a bit tired? <laughs> oh yes, sneaking. We've actually had someone in this bed. Um, they collapsed and we had nowhere else to put them, so we actually used one of these beds. <laughs> Very organised. So this is the visitor information centre, so you have lots of tourists coming through, but you also have another visitor, don't you? Yes, we have regular visits from what we, uh, whom we think is Matron Tite. Uh, she was the old matron in this hospital around about the 1950s, and she passed away in our dispensary, which is just across the hall, from what they think was an overdose of arsenic. Um, and she makes her presence known on a regular basis. We hear footsteps and doors open and all sorts of strange things happen, so everyone thinks it's just Matron doing the rounds. This is a very hot, steamy place, and it's because of that there, that artesian bore, 86 degrees Celsius that water is coming straight out of the ground. Now, the building behind me is the Thargaminda Hydroelectric Power Station. In 1893, power was generated using that bore water, and it lit the street lights in Thargaminda. And because of that, Thargaminda laid claim to be the third town in the world to produce hydroelectric power. If you look at the flags over there, you can see the British flag, the Australian flag and the French flag. They're all flying together. So Thargaminda was the third in 1893. 1898, five years later, they revolutionised it a bit by putting in a Pelton wheel. And the Pelton wheel replaced the steam engine that originally drove the generators to fire up the power. But it's a very interesting place and it's very hot and steamy and you cannot believe the power of that bore water coming from the Great Artesian Basin and that's what's used to generate all this electricity. Outback Queensland. Experience the people, the places, the wide open spaces. For more information, visit adventureoutback.com.au. Can you hear the birds? I'm in Charleville at the Bailey Bar 
Caravan Park and I'm with Wendy. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm very well. It's a long drive here from Brisbane. Well, if you break it up into little little pieces, it's quite a pleasant experience getting out this far. Okay, we're in your neck of the woods now, Wendy, yeah. the Bailey Bar Caravan Park. Um, tell us a bit about who comes here. Most of our guests are from uh, the southern states, so Victorians and the people from New South Wales, ACT, yeah. Tasmania. Now tell me, Wendy, a little bit about the caravan park itself. Uh, we have 15 uh, en-suite cabins, fully self-contained, and 50 powered sites. Okay. We don't have the unpowered sites. We um, make sure that everybody's got what they need right from the word go. So yeah, 50 powered sites, 15 fully self-contained units. And are they one, two, three bedroom? What's two bedroom, mm -hmm. one bedroom, uh, just a queen size bed, or you can have the whole kit and caboodle and bring the whole family, grandma, grandpa, and the whole lot. Right. We have disabled facilities and a spa bath. Very nice. Yeah. All, all, all out here in, well, what, eight hours from Brisbane? Eight hours from Brisbane, and, yeah. And a, two hour flight. <laughs> and light years from Western Australia. <laughs> yes, yes. If you want to be in the heart of the action, Charleville's Bailey Bar Caravan Park is the place. Call them on 07465 41744. Cutter Muller, how did the town begin? It really began as a settlement town. It's on the um, crossroads of two major highways in Australia. We were the largest wool producing area in Australia until the, when the wool industry crashed in about 1990. It was quite catastrophic on this area. But is, is tourism helping the town? Absolutely. Tourism has really thrown all of Outback Australia a lifeline and people have started to embrace it and find ways that they can share the way we live with, with people domestically as well as from around the world. And people can come to the town and do a bit of a tour? Absolutely they can. Well on the Go and Walk About Town and Industry tour that we do, it goes for three hours and we really try to give people an insight into everything that happens in the area. So it's really only a snapshot and people can then go back and explore things further themselves. But it gives them an uh, understanding of how the area developed, the industries, how they've evolved and changed and, and what people have done once wool crash to continue to be able to live here and operate. And if people want to go a little bit further, they can go out to, is it Horton Vale? It's quite an amazing um, property. It's, it's small, but the owners, the Dunstan family, really have totally revolutionised the property and done a, an amazing development there with organic lamb as well as growing crops. And that was allowed because when the weir went in in 1990, for the first time, people had access to water. And they now employ up to 65 people, so it's fantastic for the area. So after we've seen the working side, we come out and see the sort of where people can relax and enjoy themselves at the river. That's it, and uh, locals absolutely love the river, young, old, black, white. We've all grown up on the river and had loads of fun here, so the local people are extremely passionate about the river and uh, we all absolutely love it. You can catch a, a cod or a yellow belly, you can just sit and read a book, you can watch the 215 uh, different species of native birds that are in this area, you can swim, you can uh, ski, there's really no limit, uh, it's just your imagination and your desire. Outback Queensland Experience the people, the places, the wide open spaces. For more information, visit adventureoutback.com.au. Daniel, I've never seen camping like this. Well, this is what you get when you go camping five star. We're Spices Canopy and um, we're here to represent an absolutely beautiful area as you can see around you. We're very proud of who we are and where we are and that's what we want to offer people. It's a really different kind of getaway. This is like, uh, it's sort of not really like a tent, it's like a room, an outside room. It is, it's very luxurious, the beds are super super comfortable, very very warm as well, um, but it still is camping, you know, it still, it sounds like camping, you know, when you pull your zipper up in the morning it just sort of evokes those sort of old family sort of camping trips away and, and you wake up in the morning and you've got this most beautiful scenery around you I guess and it's just really, it is camping but it's five star camping.
We're, we're very secluded here. We're sitting on 8,000 acres. It's our own private property. Um, it's a working cattle farm here as well, uh, which is absolutely beautiful. And you'll only see the people that are staying here. There is nobody else on the property. Um, Daniel, what about food? Do I have to cook over a campfire? No, certainly not. I am the uh, designated chef here and I will look after your every needs. Um, we have a beautiful kitchen in the lodge where we have a family style dining, so it's a big communal table. Um, as you can see over to your left there, we have our pizza oven that we use um, not just for pizzas but for slow cooking meat as well. We do sort of roasts and braises and things like that in there. I'm looking forward to it, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. It's great food. It's very, very simple food but done really, really well. Um, really, as I said, showcasing the best of what we have around us. Ten luxury safari style tents on 5,000 acres of private nature refuge. There's Outback and there's Spices Canopy. 1300 284 667. We're here at the Outback at Isa building, and inside we've got uh, a museum that features the history of Isa, the mining history. Uh, there's an art gallery that features works from local and indigenous artists. And we're also going to do, which is the main reason we're here, the Hard Times Mining Tour. Now that's named after John Campbell Miles, who in 1923 came here with his horse and discovered the ore body. Hard Times was the name of his horse. Now the person who's going to take the tour for us and show us what mining was like in Isa is Bill Borden. Over to you, Billy. This mine here that we're going down today is 20 metres deep and it's got 1.6 kilometres of drives. Put your tag on the board and catch the Underground Express to the ore body. At the Hard Times Mine, this is where you come face to face with the lead, the zinc, the dirt and the dust. That's our silver lead. The little grey strips going through it, that's the zinc. So come on through. It's going to be a little bit stuffy in here. This is the part where things go bang. Spend two hours drilling lots of holes in the rock face and then just stuff in the explosives and hope you've got the mix just right. The machinery is awkward, dangerous to use and unforgiving. And what's worse, when something as big as this is heading your way, there just aren't many places to hide. Carl, Lake Moondara, I didn't even know Isa had a lake. Yes, we have a very lovely lake, as you can <laughs> see. It's quite a, uh, quite a nice piece of water. Yeah, it's fresh too, isn't it? It fresh certainly water. is. It certainly is. This is our town water supply. Now, you've got here the Lake Moondara Fishing Classic, Freshwater we Fishing Classic. certainly do. One of the richest in uh, freshwater fishing classics in Australia. Really? And what, 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 what's, who's coming down here then? Everybody. We've got people from as far as South Australia coming up, uh, Northern Territory, uh, Julia Creek, Richmond, all the local towns, all that sort of area. Uh, and now, has this been an ongoing thing? Or? It certainly has been. Um, the comp's been running for quite a few years now. This is our 12th year. Okay. And you have the stores, people can get through, things like that? Yeah, we've got um, quite a few food vendors, we've got stalls, we've got camping, beach volleyball, yeah, we've got quite okay. a lot here. Keith, what's your job here at the uh, festival? Yep, um, way station mostly is, is what, what I get around up to here. Okay, have you anybody brought in anything decent yet? Yeah, actually, uh, through the night we've had about five barracord. Okay. Um, had a nice one come in about half an hour ago. What's the biggest way? There, we've got a 92 centimetre barra who's winning at the comp at the minute. And there's a 50 kilo one in here somewhere? There's a $50,000 one, that's for sure. But um, the guys are out there having a go. Uh, we'd love to see it caught. Uh, my name is Dougie Bruce. Um, I'm chairman for the Calgoodoon community here in Mount Isa on the traditional lands of the Calgoodoon people. Uh, we're situated about a 2 k's out of town here at a place called uh, Painted Rocks, well-known site. We run a... Um, run the tours here, local tours. We'd like to invite you to come and um, have a look at our lands, the traditional people's lands here for the Calgoodoon people. My name is James Taylor, good day. And uh, my bush name is Alialao Wajida. And the dreaming story for this painted rocks is the goanna and the porcupine. The goanna was chasing the porcupine, they dug down into the earth and they struck water and they both grounded here. We have here also the dingo dreaming that passes through this country and dingo dreaming is very special to Calcadam people and um, he's another animal that is associated with this site. So I just picked up a few examples here of some uh, etchings here, they've been making spear tips. Here's an example of some uh, 
flints there, some chert flints and uh, quartz there and the green dolerite stone. These are an, uh, an example that we just picked up the road there. Um, these stone axes were traded from Calgary country down to Bullia and over into the Western Desert and down to South Australia and up to the Gulf and the Cape. And the animals come here to drink and there's plenty of water and good food like uh, bush tucker and medicines for the Calcadine people to use and to generate their survival. Yeah, it's a little bit dry here at the moment, but uh, when the rains come, you have a raging torrent through here. It can be a little bit dangerous. We wouldn't encourage people to swim here, but it's, uh, it's certainly a good thing. You know, we have uh, native figs in the area and plums and uh, river myrtle here. Yeah, we get our honey from there, so it's good. It really generates the, um, the bush foods in the area. Myself and my partner um, were offered a wonderful opportunity to move to Mount Isa. We started working for the mines, that was I think four or five years ago, and we haven't looked back. The career opportunities that we've been afforded here at the mine site have just been endless. So the mines started here in 1924 and the mine is a huge part of our community. Um, we have a large copper and zinc business here in Mount Isa. Uh, we have open cut underground uh, operations. Uh, we employ over 4,000 people um, within the community. Well, there's plenty to do in Mount Isa. I thought it was a sleepy little town when I first moved here, but um, I found out otherwise. There's a heap to get up to. It's a very community-spirited place. Lots of social activities, nightlife, pubs, shopping, a bit of a coffee culture here now too, so certainly plenty to do. And people will see that when they come to Mount Isa. Before I came to Mount Isa, like, it was awful. It we was. We just to be awful. We was, I was terrified because I thought there was going to be no cars, like Traffic maybe rides. like 15 people, <laughs> like horses on the street and it's one not. One or two shops yeah. and like one pub. And but it's not, not. not. It's so much better. If you're planning a holiday and want an Outback experience with a city-like feel, call Outback at Isa on 1300 659 660. <laughs>